it's fantastic to be able to be in touch with the audience and to get that feedback and to know that, you know, I still can't wrap my brain around the idea that we are on Fox in prime time. <laughs> I just, I, it's like it's almost, yeah, it's just I can't believe it. And that, in fact, uh, on this most recent broadcast, which was about global warming, mm -hmm. uh, we came in, uh, originally we were told that we came in with the same, uh, you know, we won the night, uh, coming in neck and neck with uh, the Bachelorette, <laughs> and, but but we were up 22 percent and the Bachelorette was down 19 percent. But I just learned today that we actually came in a tenth of a percent behind the Bachelorette, which really bummed me out. <laughs> uh, but just the idea that together we have been able to make the love of knowledge, a mainstream experience. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, been able to tell these stories, you know, to see Jan Ort, or uh, hopefully Fritz Wicke come Sunday night, you know, trending uh, uh, worldwide on the top three or four places on Twitter. That was, yeah. you know, that was the dream that motivated Carl. That's why we wrote for Parade Magazine and not the New York Review of Books, because we wanted, you know, we really believed that this, uh, that science and this knowledge is a birthright and it belongs to everyone. And in a democracy or in a society that aspires to be a democracy, uh, we, you know, we better spread it around. Annie knew at the outset that her objective was to change the zeitgeist, to get the conversation glowing, going on a global basis. So the, th the three data points I give you that, that we find amusing are, we were preempted in Oklahoma City during the human evolution sequence. Hmm. So that, that tells us somebody's paying attention, at least at master control there. Hmm. He's mocked on, you know, when Keenan does a skit on him on Saturday Night Live. And if you go to Funny, if you go to funny or Die, you're going to see a Jeff Daniels kind of guy running around in his ship of the imagination, which is a VW bus, <laughs> pointing out all the planets and saying, God did this and God did that. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's called the creationist cosmos. Um, check it out at Funny or Die. And, and what it tells you is that we have, we have permeated the culture beyond even what the show itself has done on a global basis. And that's really gratifying. I would add my, uh, in the Twitter, the Twitter is a flutter when Cosmos is live going on television. And you get the benefit of crossing the three time zones as it airs in the local 9 o'clock time slot. 8 p.m. Central. Um, and so, <laughs> I'm just, before. I don't play an astrophysicist. I am one. Uh, but evidence that it's crossing demographics, mm -hmm. and it's not just the the the, the well-heeled, well-educated folks who already know they like this stuff. Uh, one of the Twitter comments I'll never forget. Forgive me for not remembering the Twitter handle. Uh, it's, it, we were approaching 9 p.m. It might have been by episode six by now. We were approaching the 9 p.m. hour, and the person tweets, it's almost Cosmos time. Uh, <laughs> uh, shut your trap and get ready. Neil Tyson is about to crack a knowledge egg on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure, first of all, to thank all of you for coming, to thank you and the Paley Center for hosting us this evening. What, this is kind of a grand finale for our road show that we've been on for a long time. We're going to the and, Bahamas tomorrow. <laughs> you know, just to, to get out. No. <laughs> it is. It really, to do it here in New York City means the world to me. And as a small token of our gratitude to the Paley Center, We'd like to offer up both a copy of the original Cosmos series uh, on DVD, and this is the very first copy of the new Blu-ray. And we'd like to give it to you for your archives. We're so honored to be in the same company as uh, some of the greatest moments on television. Very proud to be in that archive. Thank you so much.